During elementary school, two big things happened in my life. I learned how to play the board game Monopoly, and I began questioning why everything I did was somehow linked to the brain. While both developments took place separately, they would later become inexplicably intertwined in my journey of exploring interdisciplinary neuroscience. So let me walk you through my own version of Monopoly. Up until high school, I did not know much about the brain. I pictured it as a simple, wobbly, pinkish, gray little lump that was sitting in my head that I wouldn't necessarily think about much, unless I was heading a soccer ball or watching a movie about zombies or just having a headache. This is a similar experience for most of us. We don't actually delve deeper into fields such as neuroscience that study the brain and nervous system unless something greatly piques our interest and curiosity, such as learning about a miracle drug for Alzheimer's disease that came on the evening news or experiencing a neurological condition or mental illness. So if at some point in our lives we all start out with an equal $1,500 allocated to us at the start of Monopoly, equal base, no unfair neuroscience knowledge, perhaps depending on how you're playing the game, you might include different distributions of the bill denominations. You might start off with two $50 bills instead of one $100 bill, things like that. We can't obviously all come from the same exact scientific background or expertise, of course. Some of us are dancers, tech experts, or philosophers. These are the differences in our starting points, the various perspectives from which we approach studying the brain. Now, let's roll the pair of Monopoly dice and advance by the number of spaces around the board based on what number we roll. The number of spaces we advance is completely up to chance. Just as a chance event is often what nudges us to learn about the brain. For example, most of us will not wake up one morning and decide to enroll in a neuroscience event or competition, but rather one thing leads to another and another. In my own experience, I found out about this high school neuroscience competition called the Brain Bee through a link from my regional science fair. The bit of information digging I did afterwards confirmed my interest in signing up for the event. But I definitely did not open up my search engine that morning with the attention of finding neuroscience opportunities. It just happened, through a bit of luck and randomness, which is exactly how Monopoly proceeds every time it is your turn. Now, previously we rolled the pair of dice and we moved forward by several spaces to, say, land on a property that belongs to the orange color group. Now, in Monopoly, when you land on and purchase multiple properties from the same color group, it gives you an advantage. I will refer to this as depth. Now on the other hand, for a rather unlucky player who lands on a bunch of disparate properties from different color groups, maybe they have one property from each of the orange, pink, green, blue color groups, I'll refer to this as breadth. Now in the neuroscience world, having breadth is just as important as having depth of knowledge. If a scientist is involved in only one niche area of neuroscience, such as behavioral neuroscience, then this would constitute as having depth of knowledge in behavioral neuroscience. However, if a scientist has some knowledge touching upon behavioral neuroscience, neurophysiology, neuropharmacology, and such areas, then this breadth of knowledge allows them to understand how an advancement in one branch of neuroscience, their specific field, can advance developments in others. Having this multidisciplinary lens to neuroscience allows scientists to make even more effectively informed decisions, which leads to a very well-rounded translation of neuroscience to the real world, directly affecting patients in clinical settings all the way to individuals like us going about our daily lives. Bringing together different branches of neuroscience and bringing together properties from different color groups in Monopoly allows us to build a stronger base to set ourselves up for success in the future. Now, no one can truly become the master of Monopoly properties or the absolute expert in one branch of neuroscience or STEM in general. The chances of that happening are very low and perhaps the end result is not the best as well. When we play Monopoly, most of us enjoy the time we spend actually playing the game, from start to finish, 
more so than simply winning the round of the game. That is, hoping that the game doesn't get too competitive, of course. But the act of playing the game itself also translates to the scientific world through the research process. A large research finding does not necessarily need to be the most important or meaningful part of neuroscience. The scientific process itself can be highly insightful and affect other aspects of our life. The journey to a conclusion or result is meaningful when we consider the time invested into expanding our own personal knowledge, highlighting a gap in existing general neuroscience knowledge, and then working to change or further the science platform. I believe that younger neuroscience students and STEM students in general place a large amount of emphasis on supposed successful science. For youth scientists, winning the science monopoly game translates to finding a breakthrough miracle drug or publishing a manuscript in a highly prestigious journal. Rather, there is much more that goes into that. First, it takes failure to get to a success point. It takes losing that monopoly a few times to understand how the game works, and science is the same way. It takes trial and error measurements and experimentation to understand if you are headed in the right direction. Second, neuroscience should not merely focus on the end result of recognition, because the field is meant to tell us more about how the human brain functions in order to understand ourselves. And it's more meaningful to be able to translate scientific findings to the general public through science communication and empower our communities with evidenced fact findings to enrich their lives. In high school, I found that when we learn about the scientific process or work to develop our analytical skills, the system greatly emphasizes coming to a conclusion pinnacle, placing importance on very concrete results and being successful. But sometimes we get so blindsided by only placing our focus on end results that we forget to live through the very small experiences along the way such as receiving a helpful Monopoly community chest card boost, or just landing a lucky dice roll. Neuroscience is more about the collaboration that occurs every single day, or the feeling of delight when a program code for a study runs correctly after you have spent an insanely large amount of time on fixing it. Now, as I furthered my scientific experiences into college, I strongly believe in paying attention to each small point of neuroscience and research, and understanding how it contributes to the greater whole. After all, every single one of my turns determines my ending outcome in Monopoly. So the next time that you are sitting with your family around the Monopoly board on a fine winter evening in November, just take a moment to think about how much smaller impact activities like board games can allow us to develop our mindset for understanding the world of science and even neuroscience that is around us in a much more meaningful, personalized way. Thank you.